Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. I am Megan Hardy and I'm the founder of Fitness Uncharted. And if you've listened to my podcast before, then you already know what we're all about. We are all about helping you to build muscle, lose body fat, improve your metabolism so that you can feel confident and empowered. I am your host, Megan Hardy, and let's jump right on into it. You guys today, we were talking about how to lower your insulin response for better blood sugar control and fat loss. So first and foremost, let's just talk about what is insulin resistance? What is your insulin response? What is blood sugar? And how does that all impact your body composition and fat loss goals? So insulin resistance is a condition where the cells in the body don't respond effectively to the hormone insulin. So then that leads to higher levels of insulin in your blood and results in elevated blood sugar levels, which we know to be characteristic of things like type two diabetes. We often associate that with insulin resistance or a poor insulin response. But the truth is, um, even if you haven't been diagnosed with type two diabetes, you can have a poor insulin, insulin response and, um, insulin sensitivity. So several factors that contribute to the development of insulin resistance are things like obesity, having excess body fat or body weight can actually lead to more insulin resistance. Genetics of course is a factor, um, lack of regular physical activity, poor diet, you know, eating a diet that's high in pro-inflammatory foods, um, you know, high in added sugars, things like that. Chronic inflammation can lead to insulin resistance, sleep deprivation. That's one that you might not think on the top of off the top of your head, but not getting adequate sleep can actually lead to increased insulin resistance and certain medications. So all of these contribute to insulin resistance. And the problem being that insulin resistance can have a significant impact on your fat loss and overall body composition. So not to mention the chronic health conditions that it can cause, but also if you're someone who's trying to lose weight or lose body fat and improve your body composition, this can be an issue. Insulin resistance disrupts the normal regulation of fat storage and the release of adipose tissue, AKA body fat. So when cells are resistant to the effects of insulin, they have difficulty taking up glucose and storing it as glycogen. So instead of that excess glucose, like, you know, we think of carbohydrates, glucose, glycogen kind of all synonymously, but instead of the, the excess glucose getting converted to fat and stored in adipose tissue, it's, it's not used, utilized how it should be. So this can lead to an increased accumulation of body fat, especially in the abdomen or midsection. So if you're someone who's really struggling with your midsection body fat and the accumulation there, you could have some insulin resistance going on as well, contributing to that. So I want to give you guys some tips on what you can do about it here. I'm going to spitfire three tips to help lower your insulin response for better blood sugar control and better fat loss efforts. So tip number one, is to eat a balanced meal with a protein, fat, and carbohydrate. So combining carbohydrates with lean proteins and healthy fats can actually help stabilize blood sugar levels and slow the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, which leads to a more controlled insulin response. So what you want to do is when you are having that balanced meal, think what's my protein, what's my fat and what's my carbohydrate source. And then when you're picking your carbohydrates, you want to opt for complex carbs that have a lower glycemic index, preferably. So the thing with lower glycemic carbs that they they're digested and absorbed more slowly by the body. And that would be things like think of like whole grains, um, legumes, fruits, and vegetables that have like a higher fiber content. Um, so we have, you know, some fruits and veggies kind of are, are better as far as the glycemic index, cause they have a lower glycemic load. Things like berries, um, would be awesome. Berries are great. So blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, but pick those fruits that have a higher fiber content. And then of course, other complex carbs, like your grains and veggies and things like that. So what you want to do is have your carb, have your healthy lean protein source and have your healthy fat. So we're not just like, oh yeah, having, you know, protein, fats, and carbs, it could be, you know, you could be having like some really processed meat or sausage or something with like a pizza and 
donuts and call that a day, right? Cause that's a fat carb and protein source, but we're looking at food quality as well. So we want lean, healthy protein sources. We want our healthy fats like avocado, olive oil, you know, the full egg with egg yolk, nuts and seeds, things like that. And then we want those complex carbs, which I already mentioned, and we want to pair those together in a meal. So one example I have for you guys actually, um, comes from a, a woman who is in our, uh, free women's fitness, Facebook group and PS, if you're not in the group, go join it. The, the link for the group is in the show notes below, but we were talking this past week. I asked the, the ladies in the group if they prefer sweet potatoes, white potatoes, or no potatoes. You know, I know I got some of my low, lower carb community up in there, but, um, but I personally eat potatoes, all, all the potatoes, but anyway, um, so I asked them which they prefer. And she mentioned that she doesn't eat white potatoes because they spike her blood sugar and which is, is valid and, and probably true. And white potatoes are higher on the glycemic index. So they do have, can have more of an effect on your blood sugar. But one question that I asked her was, you know, when she, when she eats her potatoes, does she pair it with a protein and a healthy fat source? And she said, no, she doesn't. When she eats the potato, she just has the potato. And so I, what I advised her to do was next time, if she wants to have some white potatoes, then to incorporate a, a healthy protein and fat source along with that, because her body is not going to have the same blood sugar spike as it would if she was just having the white potato by itself. Now, if she's someone who struggles with her insulin and blood sugar already, she still probably does doesn't want to go pounding the white potatoes, but she could have a little bit in moderation paired with that protein and fat source. She's not going to experience the, the same blood sugar spike as she would otherwise. So anyway, that's one tip. Also along with that is to each you eat your high fiber veggies first. They have a lower glycemic index, which means they have a slower and steadier impact on blood sugar levels. So by eating them at the beginning of a meal, you can actually help to prevent rapid spikes in blood sugar that can occur with higher carbohydrate foods. So save the starchy, uh, starchy vegetables or the, um, you know, the bread and things like that for later in the meal and actually go ahead and eat those high fiber vegetables first in the meal. Um, so that's tip number one, that well-balanced diet. Tip number two is to go for a walk after each meal. So physical activity in general helps with the insulin response. So if you're someone who's pretty sedentary, just getting up and moving at any time of the day can help with your overall insulin response. But especially after a meal, this can help reduce that blood sugar spike that we get after eating a meal. So if you're someone who's trying to regulate your blood sugar and trying not to have as much of that spike, go for a walk. Even if it's literally a five minute walk, ideally, if you could do 10 or 15 minutes or more, awesome. Um, but just move your body after that, instead of just sitting and being sedentary. I know that's what we want to do after a meal, especially as Americans, uh, we tend to just want to sit and veg on the couch, but the best thing you could do is actually try in your day. If you're someone who really wants to improve your blood sugar, try to go for a 10 minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It will, it will seriously make like some of the biggest changes for you. Um, so start incorporating that it's one really easy tip. And if you're someone who already has a step goal anyway, it's just another way to get those steps in baby. So it's a two for one. So tip number two, go for a walk after each meal. Tip number three is to manage stress. So this is one that can kind of be sneaky. I think we don't often think of stress being a culprit for uh, insulin resistance. Cause we more so think of like just food, like carb, we all think just carbs are carbs are the devil or, you know, carbs spike blood sugar or whatever. So we just often think of food, but even stress levels, like even your stress can actually, uh, increase your insulin resistance and increase that insulin response after post meals. So managing chronic stress, um, which contributes to insulin resistance. You can do things like practicing, um, stress reduction techniques. So think things like meditation, deep breathing, um, is a really good one with deep breathing. I mean, we can complicate it a lot, but really guys just like longer inhale, longer exhale. There's also like box breathing and all different types of deep breathing, but just think you actually want to extend the, the length of the inhale and the length of the exhale versus if you're doing quick breaths, like <laughs> right. If you're doing those quick breaths, you're, you're getting your heart rate up. You're getting, it's, you're in that like 
that uh, fight mode or fight or flight mode, you're getting that kind of revved up. So if you're about to compete or trying to fight a bear or something like that, start practicing that breathing because that'll help. But if you're trying to relax and trying to reduce stress, increase your inhales and exhales, and that will help that deep breathing. So things like that, meditation, yoga, um, or just spending time in nature too. That is one of my personal favorites um, that helps me manage stress. So going out for a walk, walking can even help manage stress, getting that physical low intensity activity in, and then double whammy in a good way go and go for a walk in nature, get some vitamin D and some sunshine. So, and last but not least with managing stress and the the biggie is adequate sleep. So prioritize getting enough quality sleep, at least seven hours. uh, If you can, you know, seven or eight hours or more amazing um, because sleep deprivation can actually affect insulin sensitivity and your overall metabolic function as well. So there you have it. You guys, if you found this episode helpful, share it with a loved one and please, please leave a review. This helps the show get into the hands and into the ears, you know, podcast listeners of other people who really need to hear it. And it really just means so much to me too. I really appreciate it. So thanks again for listening and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.